I'm going to show you how to make a rosebud cover. Stay to the end because I'm using this amazing stitch that I just learned to join the top to the sides. It's really, really good. For this project, you will need worsted weight yarn. I am using pink for the main color, white for the rosebuds, and green for the little V stitches. You will also need a yarn needle, of course, a roll of toilet paper, an H crochet hook, a pair of scissors, and the link to the pattern is below. The rosebud toilet paper topper is started from the top. I'm going to make a slip knot, make a ring like this, and then I put the top strand there across the back of that circle. Looks like a pretzel. And I'm going to reach in and pull that strand forward. There's a knot side and a slip side. I pull the knot side and then I put the loop on my hook like this and then I pull the slip side and it should slide like this. In the pattern it says to chain four It says to work 11 double crochets into the fourth chain from hook. This will start slipping out. This is the original slip knot, but you can just pull it when you get done and tighten it up. And then when you sew in the end, it'll secure it into a tight center. It won't matter how big that gets while you're working into it. In this pattern, the beginning chain four, three of those chains, the one chain is gonna be the center chain that you work into. The other three chains will count as a double crochet. When I count here, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I just need three more double crochets into that chain. So my work looks like this right now. Now if I just pull the end of my slip knot, it'll pull this in real close in the center, which is what I want. I don't want a big hole in there. So now I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the third chain of that beginning chain three. I can go underneath these two loops right here because they're really easy to see. Sometimes they're not as easy and I just go in like this. But in this case, I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the third chain, which is actually the fourth chain in the, from the beginning. And come through there and then through here. And that's the end of round one. There are 12 double crochets in this round. Round two, chain three, and this will count as a double crochet. The rosebud here, where I joined and work one more double crochet. In this round, I'm going to work two double crochets in each double crochet round. I will be increasing by 12 double crochets. At the end, I will have 24 double crochets in this round. You can see there my beginning chain three and my double and then two doubles in each double crochet around.
Go ahead and work two doubles in each double crochet around and I'll meet you back on camera for the joining of round two. At the end of round two, I have 24 double crochet stitches. Here is the beginning chain three that counts as a double. So I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So there's 24 double crochets. I've increased by 12. So I started with 12 and by putting two in each one of the 12 that doubled what I had here. In round three, I will increase by 12, but I can't put two doubles in every stitch around because that would give me too many stitches. So what I am going to do on round three is to put an increase in every other stitch. So round two, I would join with a slip stitch. I'm just going to go into these two loops of the chain three, the top the third chain of the chain three, right here. Go in there, bring that through to join. Then I'm going to chain three and work a double crochet in the same chain as joining right here. Now this counts as an increase right here. So on this one, I'm just gonna put one double then I'll put two doubles. So it's increase, a double by itself, and then an increase. You just do that all the way around. It's like two, one, two, one, two, one. So go ahead and do that. I'm gonna do that off camera and I'll come back for the joining of round three. I finished round three, now I'm ready to join, but I always wanna do a count before I join. Here I, you can see I have an increase and then one, an increase and then one, increase and then one all the way around. So to count, it's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36. Now I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the third chain of the beginning chain three. I go in here like this and then through here. Now, I've been working on some new joining techniques so that you don't have that little, uh, so it doesn't look as open right there. On this round, I'll show you what I've been experimenting with, and that is to work a chain two at the beginning and just go ahead and work two double crochets here and just totally forget about this chain two. So I'll do that for this round. And when I come back around and join, you'll see what a difference that makes. And you can decide whether you like that one better. This round starts out with two double crochets. And instead of every other stitch being an increase, we are going to do every two stitches an increase. So here is an increase, so I need a double, double, and then an increase. Double, double, and an increase. So I have the increase right here. I'm going to do a double, and then a double by itself, like that. I'm going to do an increase here. On the video, I think it's on the this side, there's a little wheel and you can adjust the speed. You can speed me up or you can slow me down so that you can, um, you know, have it go at your own speed, at your own pace. 
So continue all the way around doing two, one, one, two, one, one. And then I'll do the same and come back on camera and show you the joining. I've completed round four. I'll count the stitches. I'm not going to count the beginning chain two. I will start counting here. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48. Now, I'm going to see how this works on, my, on the top of my toilet paper roll because this is the last round of the top. So I need it to be the diameter of the top of my toilet paper roll. This actually could have been just a little bit bigger, but it'll work, it'll stretch a little bit. If I do have a problem, I can always tear back a few rounds of uh, the actual toilet paper to make this uh, fit on there well. Now, to show you that joining, here is the beginning chain two that I did. And instead of joining to that chain, I'm just going to ignore this and join to the first full double crochet like that. And you can see the results. So now it's a little bit fuller in there. And I think it looks better. I don't know, it's hard to tell, but you can tell the difference right here, I think. But anyway, it's your, you can decide which one, which way you want to do it. Now at the end of round four, you finish off. So the side is worked separately and then you um, connect this to the side. To finish off, I'm going to work a slip stitch like this, pull the back like this tight, take my scissors, I can find them, and I always cut back here so that I leave enough, wait a minute, um, no, I can leave the long end on the other piece, so I'm gonna cut back here to sew, so I can sew my end in. So that is the top of the toilet paper topper. So you can see that little ridge going up there. I think if you did that chain two technique, you wouldn't have any of that. But verdict's still out. So I can set this aside and start working on the side of the toilet paper topper. So to do this, you're going to chain 48, I'm gonna make a slip knot again. I'm gonna leave it longer in there. Okay, so I'm gonna chain 48. I'll do this off camera and then come back on. I've completed my 48 chains. I'm going to straighten all the chains out so that all the ovals are facing me and it's none of it is rolled in an opposite direction it has to be completely straight like this in the directions it says i've chain 48 being careful not to twist chain join with a slip stitch to the first chain to form a ring what i do is just Make sure all the eyes are facing me like this. And then I'm going to turn it like this and go in here to join to the first chain. Like that. I'm gonna go underneath two like this. And then I'm gonna use my working yarn. This is the yarn on the end of my starting chain. You use my working yarn, pull loop through, and then pull that through here. So now I've joined the ring and all of the, you don't want any of these to be twisted. So all of them 
are facing out like this. Now I'm going to, it says to chain three and it counts as the first double crochet. But I'm gonna go ahead and do the chain two and double in the same chain as joining. And then I'm going to double crochet in each chain around. Like this. So I'll come back on camera, but I'm gonna do a double in each chain around. And at the end, you should have 48 double crochet. I've completed round one. I have 48 double crochets around. Now I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet. I will ignore that beginning chain two, join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet, go underneath here, draw a loop out and draw that through here. Now I'll chain two for the beginning again and work a double crochet all the way around in each double. I'm gonna ignore this when I come back around to join. Off camera, I will do the rest of these doubles and come back to join this round and finish this round off. I've completed round two. I still have 48 double crochets all the way around. I'm going to skip that beginning chain two and join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet like this. Then I'm going to do a slip stitch here and cut this pink color off and just pull that straight out. For round three, this is the start of the V stitches that will hold the rosebuds. I'm going to start with a slip stitch. Here you join with a double crochet to any stitch. I'm going to go in this stitch, work a double, and then chain one, and then work one more double crochet right here. And that is called a V-stitch. I will skip the next two stitches and V-stitch in the next stitch. Like that. And when I chain one, I'm doing that very loosely. Whoop. So you have to skip two in between the V-stitches, like this. So it'll look like this, and you will land up with 16 V-stitches at the end of round three. I will finish this off camera and then come back on. At the end of round three, I will have 16 V-stitches. And if you've done it correctly with loose chain ones between your double crochets, it should not be pulling in at all. It should be straight like this is. To join, I am going to join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet right here. Yarn over, pull that through, and then pull that through the loop on my hook. And then chain one, tighten the back, take my scissors and cut back here, and then pull that out to lock it. There's uh, better ways to join, but you know, most of the time I just join like that. Now it's time for the rosebuds. That's where the white comes in. We don't need the green anymore. And with the white, I'm going to start with the slip knot. I think 
Most things start with slip knots. For this, I am going to go ahead and join with a treble crochet. It's a lot easier than joining with a slip stitch and then chain three. To join with a treble, I have my finger holding on to the slip knot right here, and I'm going to yarn over twice. I can go in any V stitch. I will insert my hook here, yarn over, draw up a loop. I still have this finger holding the loops. Yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. I still have my finger here and yarn over, draw through one. You're gonna leave the last loop of each stitch on your hook. Now I'm going to yarn over twice, go in here, do a treble, and leave the last loop of the stitch on my hook. Yarn over twice, go through here, draw through two, draw through two, draw through one, like this. You might have to tighten this up a bit here. The other way you can do it is to join with a slip stitch. You could take this off your hook, go in here, pick up your yarn like this, and do one chain like this, and just chain four, and slide that over, and work three trebles into that chain one space. Draw through two, draw through two, draw through one. Yarn over twice, insert, Draw through two, draw through two, draw through one. Yarn over twice, insert hook. Yarn over, draw through two, draw through two, draw through one. So now I have four treble crochets on my hook. I will yarn over and draw through four loops on my hook. Then, I will chain three. Now, let me see. Chain two. I will chain two. Then I will do the same thing, work a cluster stitch in the next chain one space of the V stitch. Keep in last loop of each treble on my hook. I will work four trebles into the chain one space. There's three. So you'll notice that when I do four complete trebles without a joining treble here, there are five loops on my hook. For the beginning cluster stitch, there were only four loops on my hook. But from now on, you will be yarning over and drawing through all five loops on your hook to complete the cluster stitches, like this. Then you chain two. There's the cluster stitch that creates the rosebud. Leaving last loop of each stitch on hook for treble in the chain one space of the V stitch. Yarn over, draw through all four. Typically, when you do a cluster stitch, you chain one after you draw through all the loops, and that becomes the eye of the cluster stitch. And then there's, then that would mean that there's a chain one in between the cluster stitches. But there's actually a chain two, but the first chain is considered the eye, and then the next chain is the chain one in between them. But right now, it looks like that. So continue working your cluster stitches all the way around. I will go off camera and come back when it's time to join this round. But this is round four. 
At the end of round four, I have my 16 cluster stitches, or rosebuds in this case. I've done my chain two after that cluster stitch. I'm ready to join into the eye of the first cluster stitch, which would be the first chain that I did after I pulled through all those beginning loops. I will insert right here, draw a loop out, and draw that through the loop on my hook. Then I will chain one like this, pull the back tight, cut in the back here. And that is the end of round four. So this will fit over the side of your toilet paper. This will be, let me see, the bottom side right here, like that. Now we're going to work the rounds that go up and meet the top, like this. I'll have to raise my camera up a little bit for these next rounds, but you get the general idea. So for round five, I'm going to switch back to pink right here, just the main color. Start with a slip knot. Now for round five, all I, you need to do here is to work three double crochets in each chain two space around. Right here, I'm gonna I'm going to join with a double crochet in any chain th uh, two space. I'm just gonna randomly pick this one, and then work two more doubles in there. And then I will work three double crochets in each chain two space around. So it'll look like this, but you'll have three in every chain two space all the way around. I'll go off camera and finish my round and come back when it's time to join this one. I finished round five. I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet like this. I will chain two and not count the beginning chain two and just double crochet in each double crochet around. This is for round six and round seven is exactly the same. You will join the round and then double crochet around and I will go off camera and do that and I will come back at the end of round seven. At the end of round seven, my side looks like this. This is called the base and the pattern. And when I bring my toilet paper roll up here, it's the perfect height. If you get to this point and your piece is not high enough, you could always Put a round of single crochet even, even uh, just one in each one all the way around, or a double crochet or a half double crochet, whatever height you need to add on. If it's too tall, you could pull back around, and if you need just a little bit more, you could make round seven a round of single crochets instead of double crochets. There's a lot of room for adjusting in here. This works good. If your piece is too big, I guess you would have to rework it and either get a bigger toilet paper roll or rework it in a smaller hook with maybe a smaller yarn. This yarn is definitely a heavy number four worsted weight yarn. A lot of worsted weight yarns, even number fours, are very light and they would not work up this large, like this example here. At the end of round seven, you want to join 
with a slip stitch to the first double crochet. I'm going to skip the beginning chain two, just go in here like this, and then pull that through here. At the end, to lay the top on the side piece. I have the right side of this. The right side is a side we were always on. When I was working this, this is the right side. When I was working the circle, I never flipped to the wrong side. I was always on the right side. The wrong side of the circle looks like this, and that strand is there. And the right side looks like this. And the right side, of course, here looks like this, because we never turned it. Now, I'm gonna lay this on top. We landed up with 48 double crochets at the end of round four for the top. And we also have 48 double crochets for the side. So each, there's the same number of stitches. So what I want to do here is join these pieces with a round of single crochet. And I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same color as the rosebuds. I'm going to line the stitches up. I have 48 double crochets on the top and I also have 48 double crochets on the side. I'm going to show you a new stitch I've experimented with. To do this stitch, insert your hook into the two loops of this double crochet facing you and the two loops of the side double crochet. Um, so you're going to be working through both sides at the same time. So you bring the loop up like this and then you yarn over and bring that through the loop on your hook to join with a single crochet. So here's where the new stitch comes in. Insert your hook through both thicknesses, draw a loop up like a single crochet. I want you to draw that loop up high like this and take your hook like this and twist it around like this. See that? And then yarn over and draw through the two loops on your hook. After I do a few of these, you'll see what it looks like. Go into the next double crochet underneath those two loops and go under the next, the, the side piece right here. You're working through both thicknesses. Draw a loop up, draw it up kind of high. Turn the hook like this. Yarn over and draw through two loops on your hook. Like that. Go into the next stitch. Go underneath those two, go under here, draw a loop up, bring it up loose, twist your hook like this, yarn over and draw through two. Go through here, go under here, draw up a loop, twist the hook like that, yarn over and draw through two. Okay, look how amazing that looks. On this side, it looks like a little rickrack, zigzag. And on this side, it looks really cool. It looks like a reverse single crochet a little bit. So just continue around, working the twisted, I don't know what you call the stitch, but I'm gonna call it the twisted single crochet. And then bring it back over here. Go all the way around doing this stitch like this. I'm gonna bring this up high, twist it like this, yarn over and draw through two, like that. Go in here, go in the back one, like this. Pull it up a lot, twist it like this, and then pull through the two. And go in here, pull that up a lot, twist it, yarn over and draw through two. So look at that. When I came back around here, I am faced with a regular single crochet that I did to join because I didn't know how to do a twisted stitch for a joining single crochet. What I want to do here is just do another twisted stitch in the same stitch as joining here. In hindsight, 
Maybe I could have joined with a slip stitch and then did the twisted single crochet here and then come around and do this, but it won't be, I think it'll be fine. I'm going to do the twisted single crochet in the same stitch as the joining single crochet like this. And then I think I will, I'll be able to pull the end of that down tight so it'll, it will be shorter. And I'm just going to join Wow, where do you join here on these things? Because they're quite convoluted. I'm just gonna join with a slip stitch just past that single crochet into this space right here. And then when I sew in the end, I think that'll be almost unnoticeable. Here I will I'm not going to chain one there because I need to tuck all that in. I think I will need to. So I'm just going to go here and sew that down in there so you can't really see that single crochet there. It won't be that noticeable. Now, I need my toilet paper roll and I will see how this fits. be perfect. Nothing's perfect, but should be good. I like that stitch because from all angles it looks really good. So this goes all the way down like this, like that. And that is the Rosebud Toilet Paper Topper. Look, it came out really good. To sew in the ends, you start with, I'm gonna start with the hardest one, which will be right here. It's not even really that hard. Right here, I'm going to fold the yarn over the eye of my needle. I could also fold it over the tip of my needle. And then open up the fold a little bit. I've got it pinched to my fingers and then pin, push it through the eye like this. Right here is where I came out. And I want to get this stitch down into the um, kind of covering up the single crochet. I want it to look more like the stitches over here. So I'm just going to go maybe in there like that. Yeah, that pulls it down. Then I'm going to go, I'm going to go back into the, I need to be on the wrong side for this. So I'm going to push it to the wrong side and then turn it wrong side out like this. And there's all those stitches. Isn't that cool? Looks like surgery stitches. On the back side, I will sew this end in like this. Like this. And then I, wherever I come out, I go a little bit behind it and then go back out again. And then I hold that up. I have my scissors flat because I don't want to cut into my work. I'll cut right there. So all of the ends, you flip it to the wrong side, would be the easiest. And just sew the end in towards the color that the end is. So I want to start right near where the yarn came out and then feed it back into the piece like that. And then go behind where I came out and back into the pink. Usually do it about two or three times. I hold my scissors flat and cut like that. So just go around and put all your ends in and you have a nice piece. <laughs> 